As many of you know, I've dealt with very intense and extremely debilitating health anxiety, general anxiety and panic attacks for about 5 years. Now of course this may be stemming from a very biased standpoint, but I do believe that my anxiety issues were very pronounced and absolutely life and soul crushing. I mean, at the height of my anxiety days, I was this 25 year old guy who hasn't moved back in with his parents, even too scared to close his bedroom door at night, just because I was so certain that I had a terminal illness that no doctor could figure out and needed someone to find me when I collapse. And I'm not kidding you, it even got to a point at which I was absolutely terrified of showers because I thought it could mess with my blood pressure and lead to a stroke, heart attack or me fainting right there. It was just terrible and every aspect of my life was completely crumbled by my anxiety. Hope you can kind of get a feeling of how deep into anxiety and especially health anxiety I was. It was things like this that were constantly swearing in my mind and I ended up forming my entire life around these worries. And seriously, my entire body was basically one gigantic symptom and every little twitch, jolt or ache would get me fired up and into this terrible abyss of doomsday thinking. And not just every now and then, but 24 7, every single day. And still, here I am, fully recovered. Not just better, but like no symptoms at all. And no more of these vicious inner talks and debates in which you end up convincing yourself that you probably are dealing with a serious or terminal disease. So yes, I do believe that a full recovery from anxiety is 100% possible. I am absolutely convinced of it. So don't let someone tell you otherwise. I'm making this video because I do believe that a lot of you watching this right now are already well on your way in your recovery journey, but you probably just don't realize it yet. I know it sounds incredibly ridiculous, but stay with me here, as I do think that this video would change your perspective on recovery and can make it easier and perhaps accelerate it. Cause the thing is, a lot of us dealing with anxiety issues do have these moments in which we seem to have it figured out, at least a bit. You know these moments in which we can kind of come to terms with our diagnosis and believe it is anxiety, and hey, we maybe even manage to string along a few days without panic attacks or even don't feel anxious at all. But then, out of nowhere, we feel this sudden wave of fear jolting through our body. It could have been a tiny ache, a tiny sensation somewhere on our body and it immediately catapults us back into panic mode and overthinking. And this is the stage in which I would believe so many of us with health anxiety are stuck and can't seem to get over. We manage to have a good or at least better moments but there always seems to be something sudden, new or unexpected popping up in just the wrong moment and that is how we fall back into our bad habits of constant reassurance seeking and excessive worries. And then it feels like we are back to the very beginning of our recovery quest. This stage is what I would consider the first level of anxiety recovery. It's the stage in which I would have gotten every angle of my worry disease checked out and researched so much about it that I felt like a real expert on the topic. And after living with the symptom for a while, I eventually managed to come to terms that it might very well be anxiety. I cannot even count how many times I've stormed out of the doctor's office after a test or a talk and was totally ecstatic and relieved. I finally knew it wasn't something serious and that all the symptoms were just anxiety. But after a few days or sometimes just a few hours, something really odd would happen. Just one symptom somewhere on my body and I was back to overthinking and the excessive worrying. Wondering if I might have been looking for the wrong illness and if my approach to get to the bottom of all of this was completely wrong. Basically I was back to square one. Now I know that the brief moment, those hours I felt fine are so crucial for recovery. I understand that in that moment I had confidence in my anxiety diagnosis. But the problem is that I didn't know that anxiety symptoms are still always going to pop up. It's a hundred percent certain. While my mind might have felt great relief from that negative test result for example, my body would still be under very much tension from the weeks, months or even years of stress. Also my general stress levels were still extremely high so that even daily tasks could lead to spikes just large enough to tip me over into a panic attack. But back then I didn't expect that. I thought that once I got to the bottom of it and was cleared from any disease, my worries would diminish, that everything would be straight back to normal. But that is of course not the case. Expect symptoms to arise again. Know that you will be worried in an instant when they do pop up, but also remind yourself that up until this stage there was no real recovery. You were not cured, these symptoms did not come out of nowhere, you were stressed all along, even if you did not feel that way. You are not dealing with something new, but you are dealing with the same thing as before. It's your body's stress response. Think of your anxiety and stress as a glass that has been filled to the brim over the months you have dealt with anxiety. In this stage, it doesn't take much, maybe just a few drops of stress and your glass will overflow. In this case, it means symptoms and negative thoughts will pop up. 
So if you manage to string along a few days of being anxiety free, it doesn't mean you have managed to empty your glass. You might have lowered it a tiny bit, but it's still not enough to be your old self again. Daily stresses and a few worrisome thoughts will trigger symptoms. Of course, it won't be easy convincing yourself of this fact, but being aware and understanding this effect will eventually make it possible for you to no longer bounce back to square one, but you will be able to remain at this level. From here on out, I didn't get full-blown panic attacks any longer. Well, that might not be entirely true, but they were definitely a lot shorter and the periods between one attack and the other were definitely getting longer and longer. You see, from the moment you understand how anxiety works and realize that you're still in a hyper-stimulated state, even if you feel fine, well, then you can kind of start an inner dialogue. That's pretty much how I would call the second level of recovery. It was a constant inner dialogue between my rational brain and my ancient monkey brain that was convinced that something dangerous was about to happen. In this stage, I was like always on the verge of a panic attack, but somehow I had the capability to de-escalate the intensifying inner unrest by explaining anxiety in detail to myself. I traced back steps, explained to myself how and why I was panicking, explained my symptoms and so on. Not going to lie, it didn't always work. I still had some panic attacks at this stage. What was going on in my mind wasn't as straightforward as it sounds like here in this video. But overall, I understood enough of anxiety and my body that I wouldn't end up at the very beginning of my anxiety recovery again. No more digging for new explanations and new diseases, but stick to my anxiety diagnosis as my go-to explanation. Hope that makes sense. When you are in this stage, the best thing you can do is to implement healthy and stress-reducing habits that would lower your stress further and help you slowly remove you from that thin line, that edge between feeling anxious and full panic. Every week, you will build up just a little bit more tolerance to additional stress without being triggered. You know what I mean. Things like loud noises, slight numbness, twitches, unexpected light flashes and all that kind of stuff that could have led to spiraling thoughts in the past now automatically seem to be processed entirely different. That is because these things can trigger stress and a bit of worry, but you've built up tolerance and remain in the safe, no panic zone, even with the additional stressor. And without those intense panic attacks, your body has time to recover and rest from stress. Which brings me to the third stage of recovery. I would describe this stage as being generally stressed, but still being able to function. I could feel that I was pretty much on edge. I could feel this tense energy in me, but my thoughts were not as negative as they used to be. I could follow through with work, for example, but simple tasks like reading a report, a conference call, meetings were overwhelming and could trigger some health worry thoughts. They never led to panic attacks, but they were there. Here I developed this superhuman spidey senses that could immediately detect if something was too much for me. If I was stressed, I could feel it and then I forced myself to take a step back and re-evaluate and adjust. In this stage, the most important thing you will have to do is to listen to your body. If you feel you are being overwhelmed, take that step back, never allow yourself to fill that cup to the brim again and of course continue with your positive habits. The last stage before full recovery was a weird one for me. I wasn't anxious any longer, but I was extremely tired and in a sense pretty depressed. I couldn't explain what it was, but as anxiety and depression are linked to each other, I believe it is a natural way out of an anxiety disorder. And I have heard from many others that recovered that they went through this phase as well. After a month or so in this stage, without really noticing it, I was recovered. It wasn't a feeling I suddenly woke up with, but it was so gradual, I kind of only noticed it in hindsight. Altogether, I think my recovery took somewhere around 12 months, but this number is not set in stone and can be a lot faster or a lot slower for some of you. The key is to implement healthy habits, be consistent and always work on improving your life, especially in days you can't seem to find motivation. Don't constantly listen in and check if your symptoms are gone or if you're feeling better. Trust me, recovery is very slow and will happen gradually, almost unnoticeable on a day-to-day -day basis. Instead. Concentrate on following the anxiety recovery fundamentals and tips from this playlist and make sure to integrate them into your daily routine. Thanks for watching everyone. And if you're new here and want to see more anxiety related content just like this one, consider subscribing.